This is the start of a bonus video series and probably not for everybody. We will build a satellite station to reach a geostationary amateur satellite 36,000 kilometers away. In the end, I should be able to talk to other amateurs using this ground station. First, I did not plan to do this video, but many of my viewers asked for it. And because such a complex project will cover many areas, you might profit from one or the other episode, even if you are a typical maker and no radio amateur. What do you think? Should I continue with the series? Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. The most important part of a project is its goal. It should be smart, as many people say. Smart means a goal should be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time-bound. So let's start with our project. Its purpose is to talk to a radio operator at New Mayer Station 3 in Antarctica from my home. To achieve that, I will use the Q0100 transponder, which is part of a larger satellite and is given to the community by Qatar Telecom. And the first communication, in amateur radio speak called QSO, should take place before my summer holidays. Frequent viewers of this channel know that I was able to bridge 200 kilometers with a small 868 MHz LoRa transmitter and 3 kilometers with a LoRa transmitter on 2.4 GHz. But how can I reach 36,000 kilometers? Including the return way, it is 72,000 kilometers. Crazy! What do we need? We need a so-called uplink on 2.4 GHz and a downlink on 10 GHz. The transponder in the satellite has a simple job. It mirrors all signals received on 2.4 GHz and sends them back to Earth. So we have the essential components. A high power transmitting path for 2.4 GHz, which is capable of reaching the satellite. And a sensitive 10 GHz receiver, which is capable of receiving the weak satellite signal. The transmitting path consists of a modulator which creates a signal on 2.4 GHz modulated in single sideband, short SSB. A series of amplifiers to get at least 20 Watt output. A high gain antenna using a feeder and a 80 cm dish. The receiving path consists of a standard low noise block down converter, short LNB also used for TV satellite reception. This LNB receives the 10 GHz signal and converts it to around 800 MHz. A 800 MHz receiver which can demodulate SSB. Fortunately, we can use an Adalm Pluto, a relatively cheap software-defined radio as a modulator and a receiver. And SDR console to control it. Because I want to avoid long cables at high frequencies, I want all these things closest to the dish antenna. This is why I need a internet connection to the Adalm Pluto. If you want to know why short antenna cables are essential on high frequencies, you can watch videos number 219 and 220. The last thing we have to talk about is frequency stability. An SSB signal has a bandwidth of around 2 kHz and you start to hear Mickey Mouse voices if you shift the signal by just a few Hz, as you see and hear here. Can you imagine how stable the modulator and the receiver has to be to avoid Mickey Mouse voices? By the way, we just listened to Q0100 using a receiver in the UK, which is very stable. 
Let's assume a drift of 50 Hz and the receiving frequency is 10.48 GHz equals 10.48 times 10 to the 9th. A typical quartz resonator has a stability of up to 20 ppm in outdoor conditions here in Europe. This is not usable for our needs. We get 0.5 ppm oscillators for the Adalm Pluto. Better, but still not what we want. Rubidium sources are the next level up. They are called atomic clocks and you get them ready-made at, for example, DigiKey. Fortunately, they are cheaper than an atomic power plant and less dangerous. But they easily cost $2,000. Maybe you get one used on eBay. Definitely not the way I want to go. Fortunately, we have such frequency standards available as a free of charge cloud service. All GPS satellites have such stable clocks built in and we can use them here on Earth by building or buying a so-called GPS Disciplined Reference Oscillator, short GPSDO. So we need one of those to stabilize the Adalm Pluto SDR as well as one to stabilize the down converter for the LNB. Both contribute to the frequency shifts if they are not stable. That's it. I will start with building the transmission line because the 20 watt amplifier comes from China, is very expensive and I want to test it before purchasing protection runs out. This is all for today. Please comment if you are interested in this topic or not. One last thing. The ham operator who currently works in Antarctica is another guy with a Swiss accent. As always, you find the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.